Thank you all for joining us today for this panel discussion with our three immigrants and dreamers who are joining us today to talk to the, us about their journeys. I really enjoyed my first panel discussion. I had a panel discussion called The Young Stars of Real Estate recently, where we talked to three under 25 go-getters and budding rock stars of real estate. I hope that that would inspire our kids and youth to take action and know that age is not a barrier to success. So along the same lines, I'm really excited to host this awesome panel of immigrants and dreamers that have come here with nothing but dreams and translated that to not only reality, but also successful corporate careers, achieve financial freedom along the way and turn their burning passion for real estate into successful businesses. Today, we are joined by Sanjay Raghavaraju, founder and CEO of 33 Holdings, Juan Vargas, managing principal of Gen Wealth Capital, and Yoshi Asado, founder and CEO of Lifestyle Capital. Thank you to all my panel members for taking time out of their busy schedules to be here today. I'm excited to hear their personal stories of their wins, their challenges, their struggles, their failures, and their stories of resilience. Thank you all for joining us so late in the evening and taking time away from your families to be here to learn and grow with us. I know I do this often and I always appreciate you guys being here for me. Like most immigrants in 1998, I came here alone, leaving my parents and my family behind, and I borrowed $3,000 from my sister and got a one-way ticket from Bangalore to uh, New Jersey and flew to College Station, Texas, where I went to college. I came here with nothing more than two 70-pound bags and uh, $3,000 in borrowed money. My first apartment was a $650 rental, a two-bedroom that I shared with three other roommates in, on Cherry Street in College Station, Texas. When I started my apartment syndication business, it was but appropriate to name it Cherry Street Investments to signify my journey from a broke college student to a financially free real estate entrepreneur. The one thing I've realized in my journey from where I was to where I am is that the right mindset, the right education, and taking massive action when the opportunities arise are critical to transform your journey from one of financial struggle to one of financial abundance. I'm excited to hear what our panelists have to say about their own stories and how their past has shaped them, what determined their successes, and looking back, how they connect the dots to where they are today. I also want to learn about their failures and what they learned from them, their challenges and how they overcame them. Because let's face it, failures treat us, teach us a lot more than just successes do. Before we kick off this panel discussion, I have some housekeeping items that I need to go through and some important announcements to make. So I'll take a few minutes for that and then kick the panel discussion off. So a quick disclaimer here, as always, you know, educational webinars, uh, this is a panel discussion, so it's a little different. A few housekeeping items, everyone's on mute except the host and the panelists. If you have any issues with the audio or the visual, please type it in the chat box and let me know as soon as possible. Please also locate the Q&A box to ask questions in the Zoom application because it's really hard to track, track the chat box for, uh, to, with questions. Uh, this webinar is always recorded and a link will send sent out to all the attendees within 24 hours. Also to avoid it from going to spam or promotions folder, please add my email to your contact list that makes sure it comes to your inbox. A quick note about an upcoming event. I'm super excited about this because I've been doing a lot of work on this lately. So uh, my webinars are kind of going to slow down a little bit the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have a one of a kind passive investor conference that I'm putting together with a couple of my partners with two full days of content. It's a virtual conference so you can join in from the comfort of your home. We have very two high profile keynote speakers. They're gonna to talk to the passive investors about the state of the market and also the best markets to invest in. And I'll just give a hint, one of them is related, is very closely, is the real estate advisor for Robert Kiyosaki and we just got a confirmation from him. So I'm super excited to have him on. 
uh, it's also an opportunity for you to gather investing knowledge across multiple real estate asset classes because you see a lot of conferences they cater to multifamily or they cater to a specific asset class. We wanted to do something across multiple asset classes. So we'll have a self storage expert, a mobile home park expert, a multifamily expert, a senior living expert, all in one conference. So we not only have designed this conference to be a one-stop conference for multiple real estate asset classes, but also about tax reduction strategies and secrets, asset protection. I'll be covering infinite banking for those of you who are, who are familiar or not familiar with it and want to learn. Uh, we have someone talking about financial spirituality and mindset that's so important to financial abundance. Uh, Elisa will be talking about roadmap to financial freedom. She actually runs a group called uh, Financial Independence University. So she talks about how to build your roadmap to financial freedom. We also have a passive investor panel with tons of passive investors, experienced passive investors, sharing their secrets to passive investing. So I hope you can join us for Passive Investor Ed 2020 or as we call it PIED, which, is, which explains the logo. So please mark your calendars. We'll have the tickets coming out soon and we've been working in the background on the website and the ticketing. So it's passiveinvestored.com. And please mark your calendars for November 7th and 8th, 2020, Saturday and Sunday. So we know a lot of you have full-time jobs. So we want to make sure that you're able to attend this conference throughout the weekend. And it's two full days. So please plan ahead in advance. A uh, quick note, all the webinars that I do are po is posted on YouTube. So if you ever want to find me, please subscribe on my YouTube channel. It's Cherry Street Investments. I also run a group called a purely passive investor group. Uh, it's 639, I think it's 700 something and growing now. Uh, a little bit about me. A lot of you folks know me, but I do see some new faces on the call today. So I'm just gonna quickly introduce myself. I am an immigrant. I came here from Bangalore in 1998. I graduated with a master's in uh, computer science from Texas A&M. I hope you guys can hear me okay. My internet connection says it's unstable. So I'm just gonna keep moving and hope that you guys can hear me. If you cannot, please let me know in the chat box. I spent 20 years uh, in technology across Wipro, IBM and Atlassian most recently. And I have been a real estate investor since 2009. I also became a financial, uh, achieved financial independence in 2019 and transitioned full time to real estate. Uh, besides that, uh, I created this company I call Cherry Street Investments. You all know about me. Um, I heavily focus on education and I love educating people. Okay, Every, someone says, Anand says, you're good. Thank you, Anand. Uh, I'll focus on passive investments in real estate, getting these passive investments in real estate to my investors, uh, high cash value insurance policies. It's also called infinite banking, as well as active real estate brokerage services. With that, I am going to hand it off to our panelists. And let's see here, um, one, uh, let's see, one, Sanja and Yoshi, we can start with alphabetical order so I kind of don't mix it around. I wanna um, ask each of our panelists to briefly introduce themselves, uh, what they do currently, and also a little bit about what you've achieved so far with your businesses, one. Sure, um, Juan Vargas here. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you, Kavita. Um, you know, I really do appreciate the the invite. Um, you know, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to, to speak. Um, you know, here in, in front of um, your audience. So, so thank you for that. Um, as I mentioned, Juan Vargas. I'm based out of Houston, Texas. Um, so, you know, I was born and raised in around the, the Houston area. Um, you know, I'll give you a little bit more background on on uh, my my status. You know, with my parents and and how that came, but but yeah, um, as far as uh, business, um, you know, founder of General Wealth Capital uh, Group um, here in Houston, um, we currently um, um, owner, we, we manage uh, 700 units uh, here in Houston, uh, in Dallas and in Phoenix. Um, I'm also a, a limited partner in over a thousand units and also a, a JV or, or GP um, in another 600 plus units. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, I know we'll, we'll go deeper into to more questions, but just a quick overview. Okay, um, Sanjay, you wanna go next? 
Sure. Thanks, Kavita. Thanks for having me. I'm really honored. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of you and much of the content you put around. And of course, also, I follow your personal journey. It's just amazing. And that's what really uh, attracted me to you in, in what you do and how you do it with a passion. So, you know, keep that up. Uh, really great. Um, so this is Sanjay Raghavraju. I'm the founder and CEO of 33 Holdings. Uh, we are a private equity real estate company uh, who is also vertically integrated. Um, so I'm originally from uh, India, uh, the south part of India, uh, from the city called Vishakhapatnam, which is a beach city. Um, I um, luckily, when when Kavita says penniless, uh, I'm like, well, okay, w what's the true meaning of penniless? Then then I really got it. It's not that you know we're on pennies and stuff and all that. But you know, I had a great living uh, out there. Came here for my higher education. I took my master's in engineering management in Toledo, Ohio. Then you know, just like most uh, immigrants coming from the India subcontinent, you know, we would uh, go into a consulting gig or some kind of a job uh, stuff and all. You know, I shared the same background like Kavita. Um, went to Oracle Corporation. I used to be based out of the West Coast, travel around the whole U.S. And that was a lot of fun until you get married and you know, then it's a different journey. And then we pretty much ended up in Atlanta by choice, um, have two beautiful kids. Um, and you know, we are trying to, uh, we just embarked on a journey. Uh, I call it uh, by chance. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to take an exit package at a, at a company. I was the vice president, vice president for marketing software company. Uh, I took that chance um, and then uh, it evolved into something in real estate. I really wanted to get out of computers and I was kind of bored. I just needed a break, uh, ventured into this and it just happened. So we are vertically integrated. What that means is we have a brokerage arm, um, a bank, a uh, capital raising arm, capital management, and then we have the construction arm and also the property management. So we are fully integrated. We have capital management where we have our own funds. We are also an opportunity zone fund and we also have managed accounts where we work uh, uh, directly one-on-one -on -one with high net worth individuals and you know family and institutions and all that. Um, so that's what we do, single family, multifamily. We're getting into a little bit of truck parking. We're getting a little bit into self-storage. We're getting into trying into co-working, kind of trying out some new things and all that stuff. So excited to be here. Thank you. I'll pass it on to Yoshi. Thank you. <clears throat> And I thank you, Kavita, uh, to having me on your uh, webinar. You know, very excited to be on. A uh, little bit about, <clears throat> little, little bit about myself. Um, I born and raised in Japan, uh, north part of Japan called Hokkaido. I, I don't know if you guys are uh, Japanese food lover or not, but if you are into Japanese food, people know about Hokkaido because that's where a lot of good food come from, right? Um, a lot of good seafood. Um, I grew up there. Um, and uh, I decided to come to U.S. when I was 19. That was 19, uh, 1996. So I came to here, uh, 96, uh, it was in California. I was a student and, uh, you know, eventually, you know, got a job and uh, started doing nine to five and then realized that I am in different sides, sides of the side of the table when I was uh, doing like a marketing, business development, sales. Uh, type of activities uh, for the company. I was a senior management position uh, for the company for business development and, and marketing, uh, stuff like that. And then I made a transition uh, and decided to do uh, uh, real estate investments. Uh, that, and I, I studied in California. I realized that Texas is one of the great markets for real estate investments. Um, so I decided to move to Texas, um, specifically for uh, real estate investments. I made a change, uh, it was like seven, eight years ago, came to Dallas. Uh, now, you know, I founded uh, this company eight years ago uh, called BCF America. I recently changed the name of the company to Lifestyle Capital. Um, and uh, I um, currently own and manage uh, 600 plus units uh, over, over, you know, including the disposition to build, uh, it's almost a thousand units. Uh, and, uh, also uh, start doing some uh, small business uh, developments, projects, uh, you know, we started single family uh, and looking into getting into a commercial uh, development uh, <clears throat> projects when the time and the opportunity uh, comes. So preparing for that, 
Um, and uh, I, I recently actually started investing in small amounts, but uh, you know, start doing the venture capital uh, stuff. So the investing to the, uh, you know, uh, like startup, co startup companies, helping them to uh, provide the uh, required capital and, 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 and try to help them that way. Um, so that's a small uh, uh, things, and this is more for the future uh, things that I want to do. But uh, mainly, my focus is multifamily uh, investments, syndicating the deal. Um, so that's what I, what I do. But uh, in the future, you know, I want to kind of diversify or get into different different fields. More, it's it's core is investment all the time, investment and the changing the people's lifestyle, including my myself. Uh, that's why the lifestyle name comes from. But uh, so that's 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 my that's what I do. Invest investments mainly in real estate. That's awesome. Amazing stories you guys all shared. So let's dig in a little bit. I want to learn about what was what were the earliest influences you had in your life? Like what what shaped you? What do you think shaped you? I know Juan had a pretty difficult childhood or at least he had a big family. So were there any diff changes or were there things that you did in your childhood that shaped your journey that that you can look back now? Juan, you want to take that? Sure, sure. Um, so as I mentioned, I was born here, um, but um, my parents had just came from Mexico. Um, they came from Mexico and, you know, my dad was the only one that worked. My mom was pretty much a stay-at-home mom, um, you know, had five siblings, uh, four sisters, one, one uh, brother. Um, and from a very early age, you know, we were put out there to work, you know, and, and yes, we're in the, in the States, uh, but we were working, um, uh, we were welding, you know, so my, my dad had a, a business. Uh, he actually worked as a welder, but then he would come home and, and do his, his side business, if you will. Um, and so he, he would come home and, and, you know, he has a shop in the back and we still, they still own this place. There's a shop in the back. Um, and from an early age, 11 years old, we're out there welding. So we're building, you know, trailers like, like the use, like, like there's different names. There's low boys, there, there's cattle trailers, there's gooseneck trailers. If you guys are, are, are maybe familiar with that. Um, but, um, you know, we would build those uh, from the ground up, you know, from, from, you know, installing the, the wheels to, to, to welding, to, to painting, to everything into out, out the door. Um, and those are the type of jobs that, that we were doing, you know, at, at a very, very early age. And we'd have, you know, friends come over and, and, uh, you know, want to play with us. And my dad would tell them, no, they're, they're, they don't have time to play, you know, get out of here. And, and so that was, that was kind of the times where, when we realized like, Hey, this is not every kid does this, you know, you know, those, those other kids are out there playing. Uh, we're out here working. And so uh, that's, that's kind of like the moments that I started realizing that, hey, um, you know, we, we're a little different than they are, you know, and, and this is around 11, uh, 11, 12 years old. Um, and my dad would just pretty much tell them, hey, you can't, you can't, you can't play, they're, they're busy. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned, um, he, you know, he had us so busy in that um, when we would go to school, uh, we would come home. And as soon as we were home, uh, we would, you know, try to finish our homework and then we're out there working already. Uh, on the weekends, you know, he would wake us up early and, and be out there working again. Um, and so, you know, he would pay us. Um, it, our pay was our, um, like over, over the summer, our pay was our uh, uh, school supplies and our school clothes. And that was our pay for a whole long summer's worth of uh, work, you know. Um, and so, uh, but what I realized that during that time was that, you know, he didn't really have time for us as, as, a, as a parent. Um, you know, as, as a child, the only thing you want is, is for your, your parents to appreciate you and to, to tell you that you love, they love you. Um, and, and my dad, he's, he's not really like that. He's, he's more of a, a dry, you know, type of guy. And, um, and I told myself that, hey, um, when I grow up, uh, you know, I want to be different when, when I have kids. You know, I want to be there for my kids. I want to tell them that, that I love them, um, you know. And, and so, yeah, that's, you know, that's why I pursued, um, you know, real estate because it gives you that flexibility um, and, and, and so that's, that's what I do now. Yeah, I can see how that would have shaped you, but it also sounds like hard work, the ethic of hard work really came, was instilled very early. Uh, Yoshi, I know that you also talked about your college stories, so you want to share, us, share it with our audience today? Uh, how you came? How, why? Came to the U.S.? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I was uh, with the family, it was like average family. My dad uh, used to own small business. Uh, it's a clothing distribution company. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a women's uh, apparel clothing distribution. 
So he sell the clothing to, you know, retail shops, right? Um, and it was up and down, roller coaster. When the time is good, it's good. The time is bad, it's bad. And when, when I was like age of, and it was, he was busy. He, 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 I never seen him like, um, you know, he left while he was still sleeping, whatever, in the morning. So I, don't, I didn't see him in the morning and I came back to the school or whatever. Um, he, you know, I go to bed like 10 or 11, right? Uh, he came back home like after 11, like 12 or after, after midnight. That's, that's every day. So I, I barely saw, I saw him. And so uh, I didn't have much time with him. Uh, so I never go to camp with, with family. I never go to ski with family because any, uh, any other kids are doing that. Like in the summer, they go to pool or, or beach, whatever with the family. I never have that experience, right? Because he, he, never, uh, he never around. But uh, financially he was doing okay. Um, but, but then the, the, there's a bad time comes, right? Started with the fire. His uh, warehouse got fire. And in the investigation, uh, investigator uh, uh, said that it was the arson. And his insurance didn't cover much for the arson, for fire. So he took a lot of loss from the fire damage. He lost maybe a couple million dollars of uh, inventory, right? Small business that's big. And then and the business goes down and he eventually have to shut down the business. Uh, and tough time, uh, it, was, it happens when I was 15 or 16. Um, and I decided to come to uh, United, United States when I was uh, 18, 19, right? But I, I think it was, it was when I was 19. Um, so it, it was, it, you know, we didn't have much money, uh, but I, I, just, I wanted to get out, right? I wanted to get out and explore the new world. Because uh, Hokkaido is, uh, is a countryside. It's not a big city. Um, so I wanted to get out and uh, a lot of people goes to Tokyo. It's a big city. So they try to go to Tokyo. I, I, I want to skip that. I want to go even bigger world, right? So I decided to go get out of the country um, uh, just, and I try to go uh, somewhere where people speak English because I wanted to learn English. Um, I, I thought it's going to be a good language to learn so that I can communicate with a, a lot of more people to explore more world, right? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I was deciding Australia, Canada, and the US and decided to come to US. Uh, I came here because it was a financially struggle with my family. I, I didn't have much money. When I came here, I had a couple hundred bucks in the, in the pocket. I, I probably had a couple thousand wired to my uh, bank accounts later on. That's, that's about it. And I had that one suitcase, uh, came here. I had a host family. I paid maybe 300 bucks or something to rent the room, right? With the host family. Um, and uh, that's how I kind of started. Um, so. Uh, but I'm glad that I did the move. That was a big move for me. Um, but that was a that was a that was a good move for me. And so that's kind of kind of you know how I started, and that was my kind of little story back in Japan. Thank you for sharing your shit, Sanjay. You want to go next? Uh, sure. Thank you. So I think my uh, mine is not um, you know I would I would call it as I had to undo some of the things that I learned rather than learn new things for me. Um, so I come from a, a, a classic uh, middle class uh, Indian family back home where the dad is working nine to five, the mom is home, we have two sisters, everything is like stable, taking care of girl, you know, I, uh, by virtue of my dad's job, he used to move around a lot, um, places to see coast areas to new factories for a promotion and all that. And that really helped shape me on many things like I was getting used to change every three, three years. Um, so I was going here five years, there five years, and I keep changing. My, my schools keep changing, my friends keep changing and all. So, you know, change has always been constant. So for me, so that probably has taught me a lot later on. Uh, but when I, when I came down to just my dad and everything, you know, it's a very, ours is more, we have very inspiration, you know, from elders, we look up to them and all. The way my dad used to work is, you know, he goes to the office at eight o'clock in the morning, comes back at six, sleeps and then Saturday work, Sunday, it's like a party day with the family, all that stuff. So I'm very used to that very routine discipline, you know, all that stuff. So I took along a lot of those disciplines in me, which helped me come, come to the US and everything. And, you know, I came from a master's, again, um, frankly, you know, we call it the smarts or something, we did good. I got a full tuition scholarship from the University of Toledo, Ohio. 
uh, where I came in, got my master's. And frankly, the master's was just the way through like a passport. So I got it done in nine months pretty quickly, get it done. Doing that, I worked in Wendy's flipping burgers and everything as soon as I can. I'm like, you know what? I got to deal with people. I'm not about books and everything. That's just not me. However hard I try it. So I bypassed that, went all the way, joined Oracle Corporation and uh, all that. So the changes were very, I was very uh, easy. It came with me for uh, change um, and, and all that stuff. So I think that really shaped me how I am today. Um, and everything in, in many regards. And then the discipline was challenging because I got into the job, you know, worked, went through all these job stuff and uh, came up to being a vice president. But there was something in me that was urging me that I was not fulfilling, right? You know, I had to pursue something. There was some, some inkling, you know, I was very happy money wise and, you know, all that wise. So when I had an opportunity to take an exit package at, uh, you know, my last company I worked, uh, I did choose to like take that option for a time. And then I said, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, I had 18 months covered and, you know, I thought, you know, what, for the first six months, let me just um, not do something that I really want to do. And I said, you know, I'm going to not do anything to do with computers. So let me see what, what else it opens up. Like Kavita was saying, open mind, take action, take opportunities and all that stuff. That is exactly what I did then, right? And it that was opened my... up a, that was, was my that? next question, actually. What does your transition okay. look like? But I'll get to that. But okay, I think okay, I want to highlight a few points that all of you guys said. You know, I, I always see the similarities when I talk to people because your childhood invariably shapes your future. Whether we like it or not, more of it. I, I still remember the things with my parents that I'm like, I'm never going to be like that. And I realize sometimes that, oh my God, I'm exactly like that. <laughs> You just yep. look back and you say, oh my God, that's my mom right there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's so important to kind of understand where people are coming from and also, you know, what drives them, right? Like I remember uh, when I was a kid, I, I wanted this BSA SLR cycle. It was just a simple cycle, very girly cycle that my friend got and she was nine. And my dad got me a old, you know, black, big hero bicycle which was a men's bicycle and all I wanted was that I'd probably cost like I don't know ten dollars or less but I couldn't have it and that was like a driving force for me I said there's never going to be some place where when I grow up I want something really really bad I cannot have it I'm not going to be in that situation so it's always interesting to hear these stories about what you didn't either it's like what you didn't have or you what you had that kind of grows on you, like discipline, what you had, hard work, that was what you had, but there was also something you didn't have that you aspired for and you got it now, right? So I, I love to hear that story. With that, let's talk about the transition, right? I found it personally, one of the hardest things for me was to quit my full-time job because I called it my golden handcuffs. It was really well-paying. I mean, anybody in technology knows they pay pretty well. You can work from home. There's all the benefits of you know remote work and all the good stuff so i struggled with the decision to transition for years even though i was financially free much earlier than 2019 because it didn't make financial sense to me just quit a job and not know what i'm going to do with myself so i wanted to actually see a path and i once i saw it i kind of jumped ship so i'm curious to hear what uh, and i, I kind of share what sanjay was saying that i was really there was something in me which was driving me away right like from the job and after 19 years i was like i'm just done i want to do something different right so i'm curious to hear what caused that transition for you guys how that transition happened because I think a lot of our viewers struggle with the same issues where I've spoken to many passive investors, right? And they all share the same, echo the same sentiment. They're in great jobs. It pays them really well, but they're done. They're really done. They want to transition, but they don't know how to transition. So I want to you guys to share your story so we can inspire the transition because sometimes it's a leap of faith. Sometimes you don't know what's in front of you and you're just taking it. But of course, being financially free kind of helps that process because now you have a fallback and you don't have to worry about the bills. So I'll start again with one. Uh, do you want to share what your transition looked like from your nine to five to doing your, do, to being financially free to doing your own business? For sure, for sure. So um, what I didn't mention about my story was 
um, you know, because I worked, um, you know, with my hands, I, I learned to work with my hands. Um, whenever I finished uh, school, uh, high school, I, I, I skipped going to the traditional college and, and instead I, I was at a crossroads and, and, and I thought to myself, okay, what can I do that where I can make some money quickly, but that I can help my, my, my parents out, uh, my mom, um, it, but also something that I could use my hands with because this is what, I, what I was, I've been taught. This is what I know. Um, and so that was a technical school. I went to a technical school, um, you know, and I went through the, the, the most challenging program, which was the, the BMW uh, program. So I actually worked for uh, BMW, the, the car manufacturer, BMW. Um, and I wanted to go work uh, in, in their service. Um, and so I did that for 15 years. Um, and so when, when you do that, when you're doing a job for, for so long, um, you know, it's, it's good and bad, right? It, and it's, it's good because you become better at your position. Uh, my position was a skill set position. Um, and so the bad side is that, you know, you kind of get that golden handcuffs, like as you mentioned, right? Um, and, and I was starting to realize that uh, during my time, you know, as, you know, as, a, as an employee there at BMW, um, it was a great career, but as I mentioned, you know, it was long hours. It was, it was exhaustive. Um, it was stressful. Um, and that's the type of job where if, if you're not working, then you're not getting paid. Um, and so you have to show up and you have to um, fix something to, to get paid. If you don't, then, then you, can get, you, can, you can go to work and, and not get paid all day long. Um, and so I, I began to look for different ways to create passive income, um, you know, to, so like that I can have a little bit more flexibility uh, with my schedule. Um, real estate was a thing that, that uh, made more sense to me. My dad um, also, he owned real estate as, as a child and he still does today. Um, you know, rental houses and he owns some in Mexico still today. Uh, he rents, he rents uh, them out. Um, and so he, he would tell me at an early age, hey, you know, maybe you should buy some houses, right? And I'm like, no, I, I don't want to do this. Uh, this, is, this is not what I want to do it, because I would see him, you know, being the guy. He was the guy that, that found the opportunity. He was the, 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 the guy that leased the, the unit or the house. He was the repairman as well. And so he, I would find him underneath, you know, a kitchen sink or doing this, doing that. And, and I didn't envision myself doing that. Um, but, you know, going back to my career, um, real estate was the one thing that kept popping up as, as, a, as a way to create passive income. And then I thought to myself, hey, you know what? My dad is actually correct, um, but he's incorrect in the way he was doing it. Uh, what you need is scale, right? What you need is leverage. Um, and, and that's when I started to realize that, hey, he's correct in, in the asset class. I need to be able to leverage. Um, and, and I started to, to, to buy some houses. Um, and, and then um, shortly after, after that, um, I, I realized that my, my goal was not gonna get there by buying 50 houses or 100 houses. It was gonna take me forever. Um, so then I, I started looking into a multifamily, um, you know, and I, and I did some, some calling on brokers. They, they, they wouldn't pay attention to me because I didn't have any experience. Um, and so then I, I was able to, uh, to acquire a deal off market through direct mail. Um, that was a 32 unit uh, multifamily property. Um, and, you know, that gave me the fl flexibility to be able to, um, you know, leave my job, so to speak, right? I, I was not, um, it, it didn't fully cover my, my income. Uh, but I still, after a while, I made, made the leap of faith and, uh, you know, I, I made the transition into, into doing real estate full time. Um, so, so what I could tell um, everyone out there listening um, is you're never going to be 100 percent ready. That's that's not that's that's not even a question. You're never going to be 100% ready. Um, you know, you have to make some take some steps um, invest passively if, if that's a, a, the ideal way for you. If, if you're still if you're a high income earner, especially, um, you know, get your way there, you know, to. to you may not get here right away to, to um, supplement your income, but you know, get, get something going, right? Um, you know, once you get to a certain percentage, then that'll, that'll give you a little bit more confidence in, in, in stepping away. Um, or you can step away by, by reducing your hours or, or your jobs that you're doing and, and kind of gradually go that way. But, um, but yeah, that, that's what I could say as a, as a recommendation for everybody out there, because I know it's, it's, a, big, uh, it's a big thing um, and it's a big goal for everybody. That's a great point. I, I agree with you that it's very, especially if you're really highly paid, it's very hard to replace your income right away. So sometimes you have to look at it as 
am I able to cover my expenses? And am I able to jump into something I actually love doing? Because what I've realized is when you do something you love doing, you do well. It's just, there's just no two ways about it. You do 100%. your life's best work when you love what you're doing. And if you're feeling kind of depleted at what you're doing, that means you're not doing your life's best work and there's no reason to be there. So Sanjay, do you want to share your transition? I know you talked a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, so, so mine was uh, very interesting and I hope uh, many in the audience can relate to the journeys that, um, you know, I've taken coming from the Indian subcontinent, you know, in, in shades of a large dream, you come and you do all that, you grow up in your ladder and then you really decide, you know, do you want to continue to work where you are, work as hard you work and go work like uh, someone else make the money, right? Because after your VP level, you are in the C bracket, so you have those decisions to make versus do I go and go do what I love? Um, let me try doing it and let me either fail doing it or let me succeed. And if I fail, I'm gonna to try to fail again, fail again and then eventually succeed. So those are the journey paths we all have. Um, and mine luckily, it all just came because uh, I had the opportunity, but frankly, I've been eyeing it parallelly uh, for two years before I was planning my exit, frankly. So I, you know, just like Juan said, start slow. So I got it starting, met my partner, created that whole thing and just did it under the shadows and with just small friends, family, myself, I did it for about two years and stuff. But, and I was really uh, having an open mindset to get into real estate. Again, it all boils down to what Kavita said, starting out, having an open mindset and then the opportunities will come. And when the opportunities come, we just have to take action. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I was preparing for uh, myself for two years and then the opportunity came in the form of me exiting uh, my company. And I said, you know what, I'm not gonna be moving to Chicago or anywhere. I'm gonna stay where I am and I'm gonna try this other thing. But again, I took a very safe calculated risk. You know, my wife's uh, equally earning, she's um, all that uh, stuff too. So it was relatively very, very safe for me. You know, unlike for Juan or Yoshi and you know, stuff like that. But yet I moved away from my own comfort zone, thanks to my wife. She's definitely been a key support to help me make that journey very carefully. And, you know, it just started on, you know, we just started uh, um, lending uh, money, basically. That's how I got started, because that's better always passive. You're busy in your job, you can do that. But then the guy bankrupted, foreclosed, so I had to let go all in. And I'm the kind of person, once I get into something, I just got to see the end of it, right? You know, that killer instinct. So that really helped learn the entire foreclosure process, uh, understand how these scam artists work and how bankruptcies work and everything. So it was a painful experience. I betted like 50 grand uh, and was about, um, about to make uh, a good chunk in three months, but I ended up waiting for uh, nine months, went through the pain, never ever before a foreclosure bankruptcies in which I had no idea how to you know, hear it worked. And I actually tripled my money for all the pain. So that was a good learning experience and it paid me very well. And I said, huh, this is interesting. So then I took that knowledge and really applied it to a few other things that I kept on doing. And with the same guy who I met to start with, and we just, you know, had, had a good vibe. As they say, it's uh, in the end, all the people's business and you just got to know how to work with people. And that really helped. And we, uh, here we are, you know, building a, a larger uh, fund. Uh, we're trying to, I to be a hundred million dollar asset portfolio as soon as we can. So that's, uh, that's awesome. you know, my, yep. thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Sanjay. I love, I love the failure way to success. You know, I think failure is just a important part of being successful that we don't see it that much. We always want to do it right the first time and it never works that way. Um, and I think those of the audience who have a spouse making an income that kind of becomes a transition should be a lot easier and a lot more doable than if you mm -hmm. don't, right? Yeah. So I think some of us single earners, like I was a single earner, so I kind of had to plan it and make sure that all my expenses were covered before I take, took the leap. And I played it just like Sanjay. I didn't make the leap until I saw the money in my bank and I said, okay, this is doable. Let me do it now. So Yoshi... Please share, share your story. Yeah, so, you know, I was in California. I got a job and, and uh, you know, bring up the ladder of the, of the corporation, right? Um, so get, got, got to the, uh, so I was, I was in, like I said, business development. And my clients are 
investors, developers, you know, home builders, uh, multifamily developers, operators, uh, hotel owners, you know, people like that, right? Multifamily owners. <clears throat> so all these guys are making a lot of money investing into real estate. And I realized that I'm in a different size of the table. I'm in the same room. But you know they're making a lot more than I do. The uh, wrong side of the table. <laughs> yeah, wrong, yeah, wrong side of the table for sure. He wasn't round. He was a square table. Wrong side. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, so I always wanted to get into the real estate investment because of that. And uh, you know, of course, Robert Kiyosaki book uh, give me the good you know philosophy of investment and how how you create the wealth, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the job was, was kind of fun. You know, I was in a senior position. You know, I, I have a lot of, uh, uh, decision making, uh, and, the, and the power in the company, not a lot, but, you know, pretty good, you know, that, uh, I was actually enjoying it and, uh, pay well, right. You know, not as high as high tech maybe, but, you know, good six figure, uh, pain and I was comfortable. Um, but the one, one after, uh, 2009, two, 2008, 2009, you know, company goes, uh, didn't, didn't do well. And the one incident happened. Um, so the top, top management from Japan, like a parent company in Japan, they sent the consultant, consultant, uh, business consultation firm to kind of uh, research and, and uh, uh, kind of analyze what's going on in the U.S. operation. And all of a sudden, all the management people got fired except me. And I, I, I'm the only one didn't get fired, but I got so a lot of paper, right? That was like, aha, uh -huh, like it was just wake up call, right? Oh my gosh, anything could happen, you know? It's not secure, you know? Even it's a, it's a W2, 9 to 5, people think it's secured. It's not, it's not, it's actually, actually worse, but of course it's not your control. Company control your life, right? You can fire like that next day. Um, so I decided to make a move, start small, right? Start doing like a single families and uh, in-law was doing a real estate investment, like a very small scale individual level, but he was doing land banking. So I was just doing that with him, with him a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, I realized that California is a tough uh, place to do the real estate investment and be successful, especially for the small guy. If you have a bit money and if you can park money, yes, it's a great market, but it's not for me. So I decided to move to Texas. Uh, I have a vision that I want to get into the commercial or the multifamily or something big, right? Uh, so I started uh, with the uh, fourplex. Uh, I bought the fourplex and self-managed. I learned everything uh, from the fourplex, you know, from uh, uh, leasing to make ready to, you know, all the operations, right? Um, so it helped a lot. Um, and then like once I quickly realized that I couldn't get to the place that I wanted to get to, right? Uh, fast enough by doing it myself. I probably get there eventually in 150 years, right? But <laughs> I want to do it in uh, five years, in 150 years. I mean, buy and sell the single family or small deals, you get there eventually. But it's, it's, it takes too long, time, right? Um, so I decided to do uh, syndication uh, and then buy a bigger deal. That's how I, uh, I was able to scale the, scale the uh, real estate investments. And also, I always wanted to have a, my own business, right? So business will create the cash and the cash will go into the investment, right? That was the system I wanted to create. Um, so I was doing like a broker. I, even before that, I started construction. I, I mean, the uh, plumbing companies. I started like a online shopping sites, stuff like that. I try and error. You know, that's the, that's the failure comes from, right? But if you don't stop and try new things, try new things, you, you eventually get the, uh, gets the, the right ones. Hey, this is it, this is, this is, this is working out. You, maybe we're gonna put more, I'm gonna put more time, more money, grow that thing, because it's working in a small scale. Let's make it big, right? Uh, so I was doing that and I, I was making more money than W2 income. Uh, uh, by doing different businesses, brokers, you know, real estate investments. I, but I didn't pull the trigger, like you said. I was comfortable too, because it was a home office. I have a flex, flex time, and uh, they're paying well. Great insurance, great benefit, all that, right? But one time, one, one time like, you know, 
you know what, you know, I have to have a commitment. I have to have a commitment. I have to just focus on something to grow really big, right? I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to stuck with this multiple things and, you know, everything's doing okay. And uh, I might lose everything at point, one point or, you know, what, whatever. It, it wasn't satisfying my uh, passion, I, I would say. So I wanted to focus. I, I always wanted to own my business. I always, always wanted to be independent uh, and to control my destiny. So I pulled the trigger um, when uh, my syndication business uh, grew where the, uh, that's going to you know, just pay the bills and stuff like that. It's going to be a pay cut a little bit compared to W2 just for that income, right? But I have a other income source and everything else. So uh, I just pulled the trigger and now I'm very, every, every morning I wake up, I feel so, I don't have confusion in my head, right? Yeah, so, so, so uh, it's, it's healthy mentally, I think. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I pulled the trigger, you know? Yes, absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, it's so many things you said, right? Like you get so comfortable and we take so much. We think there's security in jobs, but there isn't, right? And we know right now COVID's happening. We don't know what the job market's going to look like next year. With Everything has a fallout, right? So I really think this idea of security and comfort can really pull us back from actually going out there and trying something new. So something to take away from this is that comfort and security are not going to let you graduate to the next step. You have to be uncomfortable at some point and you have to lose that security blanket around you and you need to take a leap of faith. Really, that's uh, to me, that really boils down to those three things where you really have to at some point transition. And what makes that transition easier, guys, is to actually have a side hustle that you can start right now. And that side hustle plus passive income from multiple sources can really help make that transition much smoother. That It doesn't have to be painful. And that side hustle doesn't have to replace your job income completely. And sometimes you just have to trade off, right? Like if you have a spouse working, that makes it a lot easier. But if you just have a side hustle and you're single, you can still do it. I mean, it's totally doable. Um, so start working on looking at what your hobbies are, what do you really love doing? What are you passionate about? And that does a good side hustle to start really it might not be real estate for you it might be something else but figure out where you don't notice the time go by and you're excited to wake up if you have to do it over and over again and not everybody's into real estate find your side hustle so that that would be my uh, suggestion and i think that's what we've heard from all our panelists today uh, with that, I'm going to ask about mindset and motivation. And I think these are really important things. The one thing I struggled with when I transitioned is suddenly I lost the structure of a team and someone telling me what to do every morning and I had to drive myself, right? It's, it was foreign to me after 20 years in the workforce. I'm just waking up every morning and there was a sense of what am I doing with myself? What's today, right? So you really need to, one, up, work on your motivation and mindset every morning, and I think, and I think really uh, be disciplined about it. There has to be some discipline. And I have to say discipline is not my strong suit. So what I want to hear from you guys there is, how do you keep yourself motivated? Because every day is not a good day. How do you pull yourself out of the not so good days? And when we have doubts or setbacks, how do, you, how do you handle it? Because when anybody transitions, say, I can tell you my own story. Uh, when COVID happened, real estate wasn't happening. And I had this serious moment of doubt saying, oh my God, did I do all right? I think I actually kicked a great high six-figure salary and I'm just sitting here and everything shut down. What the hell? So how do, you, how do you navigate something like that, right? There's going to be moments of doubt, moments of setback. So what I want to hear from you guys is what were some of the struggles that you initially had when you started or you need transition and how did you overcome it? How do you keep your mindset and stay motivated and keep it on point? And I know all of you guys are really good about doing this. I've seen you personally. So um, whoever wants to go first, go. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll take the, the first crack at it since I've been a first on the, the last couple, but sure. um, yeah, I, I would say it's, it's certainly not easy. Um, whenever I first transitioned, um, I was like, okay, well, I have some, some spare time now. Um, you know, I got this. And, and, you know, you realize that you're, you're burning time. You know, you're not being productive. 
you know, and so whenever you're, you're planning to leave, you, you think that things are going to go this way, right? You write all these different things down, those goals and, and your, your schedule. And, and, and then in reality, half of that doesn't happen, right? And so what I realized was for me, the, the, the best way to keep track of my, my daily routine is, to, is certainly to, to have a calendar and to mark everything down. Um, so I have, I'll have my calendar, every single activity or every single phone call or every single meeting or, or, or whatever, I, I have it down on the calendar. And if it's on the calendar, then it's going to, it's going to slip under, under the rug. Right. Um, so, but that's sort of one of the things, but, um, you know, I think it goes back to, um, you know, the discipline, I think it goes back to the, the mentality as well, right. You have to have the right mentality and know that every single day is not going to be a great day. Um, you're going to have days that, that are going to be down and you're going to be frustrated and, and you know, that, that's something that you have to know that's, that's going to be part of it. That, that's what comes with it, right? Because, you know, as you know, you know, most people only see, you know, people at the very top and, and you know, the, the top of the success ladder, right? Um, and, and, you know, you don't see that, you know, the struggles that you went through, right? And, and part of that is, is that, you know, there's going to be days that they're not going to be good. But um, for me, I like to, to stay active as much as I can, you know, keep, keep your body because you get one body and, and you got to keep your body. Uh, that helps with your mindset. Uh, stay active as much as you can. Go to the gym. Uh, do those type of things. Um, and, and really the, the best thing for me, whenever I'm down is, is, you know, I, I look in, in, in my other rooms and, you know, and, and look at, at, uh, at my kids, you know, I think my kids and, um, you know, th that's, that's my motivation, my wife and my, my family. And, um, you know, I have to keep pushing, right. You know, you get, if you fall down you got to get back up and, and, and go, go to work the next day. So, uh, my family is my biggest motivation and, and they're the reason why, why, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, you, I have to keep pushing. Awesome. Um, Sanjay? Okay, oh, Yoshi, go. go. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. okay, go ahead. You want me to go? Okay. Um, so uh, my motiv motivation, yeah, it's, it's uh, discipline, right? For sure. Um, and uh, it, it routine. I, I have a morning routine that I do every morning, and that helps, helps me start, jump start the day, right? So um, <clears throat> uh, what, what I do is actually beginning of the year, I make a dream board, right? Dream poster, whatever it's called. Vision think, board kind of thing. Board. Um, so that's my new year resolution, right? What kind of, uh, you know, the, what kind of things we are, I want to achieve in the real estate investments, uh, business, what kind of car I want to buy, whatever, right? What kind of uh, family vacation I want to have, um, what kind of, you know, uh, time I want to have with, with my friends, the calling time, all that. Um, so I have a dream board. Um, <clears throat> And it reminds me every morning, every morning. Don't miss it any day, every morning, right? That's one thing. It's vision. You have to have a vision. You have to have a goal. And you have to have a, a clear path to get there, right? And it reminds me every day. So that's very, very important. I, probably you guys read or heard uh, Napoleon Hill's, you know, think and grow rich, right? Absolutely. You have a vision, you have a path, and it's going to become a, a reality, right? Because uh, now... If you think that every morning and it's in, your, it's in your mind, you might find the opportunity that you might miss with, without the vision or, or you, you get prepared. You, you, you always prepare for it. So when you have an opportunity, you can grab it because um, uh, you're prepared to grab it. Um, so it's very, very important, right? And, uh, um, but if you are not prepared, you know, if, you, if you're not prepared and you grab the opportunity, it might be a risk. You might fail. Uh, you know, even if there's opportunity, you, you might be, you might not be able to handle the opportunity. So that's that. So going back to the morning routine uh, to uh, motivate myself. So I do that. Um, so I take a cold shower, wake me up, um, and then I do the uh, yoga type of uh, uh, stretch, and I meditate. Uh, and I meditate myself, and that helps a lot. You know, clear up my mind why I'm, I'm here, you know, what's my, you know, what's my uh, vision, uh, what's my purpose, you know, all that, right, reminds myself every morning, that point, I, I'm always, always 80%, I always, you know, 80% church, that point, and I come downstairs, see the dream board, remind myself, the, you know, goal and path, and what, what, what I have to do today, and uh, that's kind of motivate me a lot, right, so every morning, if I do that, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, motivated, ready to go. But sometimes it doesn't last eight hours or 10 hours. So sometimes, you know, three hours, three hours is good, but it's kind of, you know, 
you know, uh, I, I lose the gas, then I'm going to go outside. And I, uh, what I do is I probably um, do, I, I, I train uh, kickboxing, right? I, I train kickboxing and that's my, uh, that's my uh, workout, that's my exercise. Um, but I go outside, you know, I do, you know, shadow boxing or something like that just, just to get the block going inside the body. And uh, when, when the body is ready, I think your mental is start to going up, right? Um, so that's kind of how, how, I, how I recharge when I get out of gas, you know, during the, during the day. I'm going outside, just move the body, stuff like that. And then when I get stressed, you know, I, I woke up at night. I woke up like six, seven, eight at night. Uh, because that's when the gym opens. Um, so, you know, the, I take classes, right? Kickboxing classes. Usually it's a night time. And uh, so I go to gym, you know, wh whatever day was, like stressful day, good day, whatever. I go there, focus on, focus for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, just doing the, just doing the kickboxing. Uh, especially sparks, light spar, sparring is like, you, you, you got to focus, right? So you, you forget every, you forget about everything. You just focus on not get hit and try to hit people, right? That's 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 the only thing I think. <laughs> and then after that, you know, it's just to clear up the mind again. And uh, and then on the way back home, you know, driving, I start thinking about the business. But at that point, I clear up all the clutter. You know, it's just clean, clean up. So now it's creative things happening. Oh, you know, I should do this. I should do that. All these ideas come coming into my mind, coming to mind on the way back to the at home in the car. That's like some, you know, a lot of time I get the idea um, that time, or you know, after taking a cold shower, I get the idea, stuff like that, right? <laughs> so that's kind of like you know, have a routine and fine tune it so that it works for you, right? Because this is this routine works for me, but not necessarily works for you or for for him or for her. Uh, I try an error and I fine tune it and I find the ways that works the best for me. Because sometimes I have to struggle, you know, I, I'm not, I don't have motivation, I don't want to do anything, and I would just sit there, you know, just you know, doing the Facebook, whatever, right? And then all of a sudden I spend like 45 minutes, hour, an hour, oh my gosh, and I'm trying, but I can't go back to the laptop, you know? I, I had the moment and then mm -hmm. I tried different things, how I change my motivation level, right? So I tried, I tried different things and, and the things I mentioned was the works work the best for me. So I, I do that right every day. So I think uh, try something, fine tune it, make the, your routine that fits for you, customize it, you know, that's, that's, that's Absolutely. probably. Yeah. Sanjay, go. Yeah, 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 I think uh, speaking about drive and uh, motivation, I think for me, the drive, uh, I think it relates also to your larger purpose and you know many bigger things. Uh, you just gotta figure that out. Um, I feel it is uh, at various stages of your life, it's gonna be different. Um, you know, early on it could be something, once you get into the business, as you grow, it could be something. So, so it kind of changes. So the, of course, if you go into the purpose, the larger purpose could all align to be the same, right? So I think if you start with the purpose, you can figure out, you know, what drivers will drive you towards it. And that's what makes it happen. I think for me, I think I was just an innate driver uh, myself. It, it just came from within. So luckily there was no like external motivation for me or anything that it just came naturally, I felt. And then as part of that, of course, when you get into that, you figure out, you know, why you are really pushed into this new direction. And that where I was able to, you know, uh, at least infer for now, but, you know, it will change over time and everything. Like, you know, I always wanted the opportunity for my kids to know both worlds. Like I come from a world of where, you know, you go work hard, get a job, you know, make ton of money, invest into things and just, you know, you, you work till you retire off and then you, feel, you know, enjoy life and stuff like that. So that's the mindset I was from. I was always curious about the other side, the business side of it. So I just wanted to go experience it myself um, and then also provide the opportunity for my kids uh, should they choose to. Like, I'm not going to force them this way or that way, but for them to just have a choice. So that, that's as of today it is. It could change later on and stuff like that. But, but from a drive perspective, it was just came naturally to me. And as far as the motivation perspectives, uh, it is definitely very important to you know be motivated just like drivers it keeps changing 
Um, I call myself, I think I, I, I reborn after every phase. That's how I feel. Uh, you really discover a new yourself, you discover new skills. And I was like, wow, you have all this? What are, what, why are you hiding all this? You know, go give it to the world, go push it, push it out to people, share it. You know, that's, that's kind of how I feel. But I think it's strongly to be motivated. You have to be uh, emotionally motivated. You have to be physically motivated and you have to be spiritually motivated. Right. I think these are key three different drivers. And if you relate it back, it boils down to, you know, the mind, uh, the body and the soul. Right. You know, those three things. So it's just a matter of from from that higher level, really distilling down to what each of our journeys are, how they are, what those drivers are. It's just aligning all those things, I feel. Um, and for me, luckily, you know, I meditate like Yoshi. You know, I try to do yoga. These days, I just got a personal fitness, getting inspired from Kavita again uh, mm -hmm. on some of her fitness. You know, me and my wife, now we work out together in the morning. So we're just trying to figure out a, you know, a rhythm from the body. We are not as much. We, we, we come from cultural family where food is everything. You know, we got to <laughs> enjoy it all. And, and, and now it is different. <laughs> I'm sure Kavita can understand. Uh, it's a struggle. It's a lot, struggle with food. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so, and then um, the, the soul really is more spiritual. Again, uh, I think it's a different level. Uh, I'm not yet there, nor I intend to that fast. But uh, I think meditation, you really figure out a lot of things, like Yoshi said. And I really like what he was saying on, you know, how you rethink and, you know, revisualize. Like Yoshi was someone who do that with vision boards and everything. For me, frankly, uh, I didn't have those until now. But in my next new phase, I feel I really need to have them, right? Like the new new journey I'm going. So it kind of changes just because you didn't need them when you're from, you know, you try to build something and now you want to go to the next level. You will, so, so I think it all boils, as Kavita said, again, I don't know why it's stuck in my mind. Have an open mindset, the opportunities will come and you just have to take action, right? So I think it's, that, that's kind of the bottom line which, which it all boils down to. So. That's amazing. So I want to summarize what you all said and I saw a lot of parallels in what you guys are all doing and I think I see that in myself too, although I have to say I was the most undisciplined person except for workouts. I was really good with that, but I really didn't have discipline when it came to my daily life and that's something I've really had to inculcate to kind of go forward. And I have to say I don't do it 100% of the time right but I get most of the time right. And I think you should stop beating yourself up if you don't, you, should, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get started. <laughs> Perfection is like the enemy of anything, right? Like that's one thing I've had to unlearn because I tend to want to do things right or not do it at all. And that doesn't work. So what, some of the things I want to summarize here, physical activity, I think being physically active just improves your energy levels. Just, I call my workout the best antidepressant out there. COVID, whatever is happening outside, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if this is inside is good, it's all good. And I follow this guru called Sadhguru. He's an Indian spiritual guru. And he always says, external world doesn't matter. And he does this workshop called inner engineering. It's all about your inside world that matters. Your success is your inside world. So just remember that. And then the other thing, one and everybody Yoshi talked about is remember your why. What is your why? What is your bigger vision that you're striving towards? When you have that in front of you, it becomes a driving force. It becomes, it just comes, right? But if you don't have that in front of you, you don't necessarily have to have a vision board, but just remembering your why really helps. Uh, having a discipline, a, a morning routine. To me, I started doing this with a group of people, just like you guys, maybe a different morning routine for each person. But there's this uh, book by Hal Elrod, it's called Miracle Morning. And it talks about a series of things you do, like silence, affirmations, visualizations. So I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, and I got introduced to Hal, and I was like, okay, this is it. You know, I made my own morning routine. I don't always do it. I'm imperfect, but I do it most of the time, and realize that it helps me a lot when I do it. 
Um, and then remembering your larger purpose, whether spiritual, and I love what uh, Sanjay said, emotionally, physically, and spiritually motivation, uh, being motivated in all those three aspects is important. One doesn't work without the other. And lastly, I want to wrap this section up by saying uh, people often, I want to quote Zig Ziglar on this, people often say that motivation doesn't last well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. So it never lasts, right? We all have to kind of self-motivate ourselves and it's a daily process. So just understand that we are nothing exceptional. We are just, we are all, all these panelists have come together. They have their own struggles, but that every day they wake up and beat that struggle. So you have to just do the same. So with that, Let's go to the struggles. So tell me about the biggest challenge or failure you had, whether it's multifamily or otherwise. What is your biggest failure and how did you overcome it and what did you learn from it? Um, yeah, so I, I would say the biggest uh, struggle, you know, besides, you know, when, when I was growing up um, was actually when, whenever I did leave my W-2, right? So we were talking about earlier uh, why you should probably leave your W-2, but that was actually one of my biggest struggles, uh, to be honest. Um, so I left my W-2. Um, I, I had the, the 32 unit um, shortly after that. I would say about a year, year or so after we sold it. Um, and so we had no income from that. All right. So we lost the income from that. Uh, I sold it. Uh, my, my idea then was to, hey, I can take this and then, and then grow it, uh, grow this, this capital. Um, and, and so that was a struggle, right? Um, my wife, luckily, she was working, uh, and and for me, you know, I had to find find a way to 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 keep it going at that point. So so I think, um, you know, for anybody out there, you know, looking, you know, and I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, anybody out there looking to to leave their W two, um, you know, yes, you should. Um, when when should you do it? That's a, that's another question, right? Um, and so so be ready um, as much as you can. Try to try to in, invest in some deals. Um, and try to find your own deals. Um, but, um, you know, as I said earlier, you're never going to be hundred percent ready. You're never going to feel hundred percent ready. So, um, but yeah, that, that was, that was, I would say my biggest struggle and, and we overcame it and, and we are uh, a good now, but you know, that was certainly scary <laughs> to say the least. Sanjay? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? What failure. was one of your biggest failures and how did you recover from it? Or what did you learn from it? Well, um, no, failures is something I'm, I, um, my earlier, before I got into business, my quote always used to be just to self-motivate myself, like failure is not an option, right? Uh, but as I moved into the business world, um, I would always, my mindset now is failure is the only option. Um, it may be, again, you got to really go through this to really understand what it really means. Um, so when you understand it, you will know, you know, you, you will know that you have achieved um, a, a Zen-like um, rhythm that you can go beyond uh, what you're capable of and use it uh, beyond um, for a greater purpose, you know, that's where you connect all the spiritual, physical, and, you know, emotional and all those things. But, you know, my failure, luckily, thanks to the real estate market, it's been on a ride since I got in. So <laughs> lucky, but even then we failed miserably. But you know, I have uh, quite a few failures. Uh, I initially to get into a technology things too, uh, before I tried to get into real estate, uh, miserably failed. I just didn't have the right people around and everything. So I thought, you know, that was a disaster. Um, and that really helped me figure out when I went into the real estate journey, I want to surround myself with always the right people, right? Uh, I think the people was a main uh, key for me to propel myself into this new field. And since then that was, uh, you know, you, you what do you call, uh, from the inside, you have that inkling. It doesn't come out until you can feel it, but you know, you know it's happening. So that was my, my biggest challenge was that to really align the team, but failures all along, uh, the tech business was a failure. Then I came into the real estate. We had uh, just, again, the open mindset. We went into multifamily garden. We had no idea what we were doing, tried to figure it out, got beaten up, um, you know, bad lead, uh, almost losing money. And then we figured, guess what? Let's sell the asset and cash out and make money. 
that's when you got into the real game of real estate right you really understand wow what an opportunity it is and you know whichever asset class you are uh, pinning in so the failures really helped me learn and get perspectives on things on better things so i was more addicted now to failures that really helps me try new things always invest again i like you should do a lot of angel investing i do early stage tech investing just from the tech background and now we are uh, getting into co working we have i think i was telling this to kavita the other day uh, we launched a platform now called hub 33 which is pretty much launched which will be going out to the outer world pretty soon and i'm excited for some partnerships i can build with kavita more in really sharing the voice sharing the uh, stuff out there and you know many of these things so i think failures are key for your growth and and please i think the key takeaway should be that never never a fear of failure the more you fail the better you may not understand it now but when you get there when you look back you'll really know you know it is worth the fail so that's amazing yeah. embrace failure yoshi so um i i have a lot of failures <laughs> so i don't know which one's biggest uh, but uh, i don't think it's a failure In my opinion it's a process right process to get to get there uh but uh i have a lot <laughs> so uh, when i came to united states i didn't have any english i, I didn't speak any english right i i knew yes no and i don't know so people said that's the entrance i didn't know what entrance means hey that's the exit i didn't know what exit means right and i went to mcdonald's and i couldn't order burgers and i was like oh, uh, and you know point the uh, point the menu and uh, i couldn't order what i want i i i was able to order what's on the picture that's that's it right which i didn't want to get it but that that was the only thing i could get so i ordered you know so my fail the first failure was um i didn't i didn't uh uh study english enough when i came to united states i should have studied a little bit more before i come to united states so that at least i have like minimum english right um uh, but uh you know I didn't I didn't just I didn't quit right? I wanted to go back to go back to Japan right away because I was, oh, I couldn't live here you <laughs> know this is horrible you know um but uh, I didn't quit right so what I did is instead of going back to uh Japan I try not to hang out with Japanese person in California um so if if I hang out with Japanese people I naturally speak in Japanese everybody speak in Japanese right I intentionally avoid the situation So I didn't have any Japanese friends. I didn't I I try not to make any Japanese friends and I try to hang out with the uh <laughs> non-Japanese people, right? So it forced me to speak English. And I try to learn English, right? And eventually I'm still learning. I'm still my English is broken, but you know, much better than before. Uh for sure. So I mean process, but that was one of the biggest failure, but to keep going and you you keep improving and you keep, you know, you 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 get the adventure, right? And another thing is I went to karate dojo, karate studio. Uh but it was so, so hard, you know, I got beat it up every day and I got bruises and I quit, right? I couldn't get the black belts. Uh so and the, but I shouldn't I shouldn't quit. But but uh uh one day okay i i need to get the black belts i got to go back to the, the studio i st- started over again and finally i got the black belts um uh, that this time i got beat it up but I, i i was expected so i was able to stand it i was able to you know, keep standing up and go back right so i finally get the black belts um all the businesses small businesses i wanted to be an entrepreneur i i want to have my own business i started the uh silver accessory online shopping site right long time ago like 15 years ago whatever 20 years ago when uh, amazon just came out i was actually making my own site uh and amazon can sell book i can sell silver accessories you know <laughs> i started but i didn't go but i learned a lot by doing that in the process and uh and uh, i i didn't make i didn't make a, a same mistake for the next one right so i started plumbing business and i didn't go anywhere but i learned a lot again and now i, I was in the brokerage i was pretty successful i'm making like triple uh the money that i made with the w2 income with the you know real estate commercial uh brokerage business business right so a lot of failures but i don't feel that those are failures it's just a process of 
getting better and better and better, right? So the, and then you know, finally pull the trigger, quit the quit the quit the uh, W two uh, ninety five job. That was a failure. Failure that I didn't quit, but now I pull the trigger, I quit quit it. So failure. It's not fair anymore. I, 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 I'm completely independent, you know, financially independent. And that's what, what I wanted to do, what, what I wanted to be. Um, and I'm doing it right now. So I have a whole new set of goals right now. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, I want to get into developments. I want to get into, you know, I want to do the, the you know, venture cap, you know, VC, so. the, um, you know, venture capital, invest in startup companies, help, help them grow. Uh, stuff like that. So it's a whole new level. Uh, but then I'm just, you know, working, working on it every day, you know, stuff from, stuff from the cold shower in the morning, you know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to look at that cold shower business. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do cold showers in the morning. But I love, I love all, the, all that you guys said. Failure is the only option, which I think I relate to as well, because I've always been like, I've, I'm, I've been, always been a, not a risk cover. So I've been a risk taker. So that wasn't really hard for me, but I really re relate that a lot of people worry about failure and they don't even take the first step. Right. Um, when I jumped in, I mean, just to add to your stories, uh, my daughter was so scared. She's like, Oh my God, you've started six businesses that went nowhere. <laughs> Are you sure you want to quit your job on the seventh one? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? This is it. I feel it. I feel it in my heart. Like, <laughs> she just, she didn't believe it. She's like, I'm not really sure about this. I hope, you know, you're thinking about this right before you jump in. So I, I just thought that was really funny because she's like, are you sure you want to quit your job? <laughs> uh, but I think all those businesses teach you what you, you know, what you needed to learn to step up, right? To change things because every failure is a path to success. And I love what Yoshi said. It's just a process of getting better, every failure. Um, so we need to really embrace those failures. And um, I, I remember I was trading in the stock market and I lost a bunch of money in option trading. That's how I started into real estate because I lost a bunch of money in stock market and I realized, oh my God, this sucks you know, like huge trades. I started doing huge trades and lost huge. But uh, it also forced me to look at other options where I couldn't lose so, so quickly, right? And that was 2009. And that really prompted me, if I hadn't lost that big, I would have never looked at real estate, right? It was just, I look at it now connecting the dots. I'm like, okay, that made sense. It was great. So just take the step and embrace failure and just do it, make it happen, right? I love, I love what you guys are sharing here. Um, so let's come to, I have a question for you guys. Uh, there's always a pivotal moment that kind of changes you. Like I call it the one thing. Uh, sometimes it's like something you read. Sometimes it's something you experience in life, but that changes you forever. And now you look back and you see, realize, oh my God, that one thing is really important. So what is your one thing that you can share with the audience that has changed your life? It can be a pivotal moment in your life that's changed its course. A book you read, I mean, for me, Cash Flow Quadrant and that uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was huge, right? Maybe it was a book you read, a seminar you attended, a thought that made a huge difference. So what was it for you, the one thing? Um, so for me, uh, going back to, to kind of what I, what I mentioned earlier was uh, with my dad. I mean, that's, that's something that's, um, uh, that's tough, but um, my dad, you know, he, he was, he wasn't really there for us um, as, as kids, as kids want him to be there for us. Um, and, and, you know, just, just not even, not, not one day, not one time until this day, you know, did he play with us um, with the ball, right? As a kid, you just want that, that little playtime, right? And um, now that one day that he did that, right? So he, he's just straight business and, and just, he's, he's a good person and I love him, but you know, he never showed us that love. And so that, that, that was one thing that always stuck with me. Um, and, and so I have three boys. Um, and, and so that's, that's why it's, it's, a uh, it changed me right there for sure. But, but I, I would say as far as, uh, books that were, uh, certainly life-changing, um, I certainly read, you know, the, the Rich Dad books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, the Cashflow Quadrant. That was, um, you know, one of the first books that I read, uh, the multifamily, um, uh, uh, no, what was it? Uh, the, um, I can't remember the name of the book, but um, 
there's a lot of books out there, uh, Multifamily Millions on, on multifamily specifically. That was a good book by Dave Lindo. Um, Emerging Real Estate Markets, that was another really good book. Uh, but but I, like, I like a lot of the, the biographies um, or the autobiographies. Uh, like uh, we have uh, Jeff Bezos, The Everything Store. Um, that was a good book. And, and his book, Elon Musk's book, and um, um, which one was the other one? Um, Made in America by Sam Walton. Right, those three big entrepreneurs, they all had a same similar uh, way of thinking. Um, and you know, anything that was in, in their path, they, they made sure that they, they just, they kind of ran over it, right? It was an obstacle in the way and they ran over it. And uh, just, just knowing how these guys think, uh, those books were, were pretty eye-opening. Um, you know, David Goggins, his book, you, you kind of mentioned about motivation. Um, if, if anybody hasn't read his book, uh, or listen to his book. I recommend that you listen to his audio book. Audio versus, book. Uh, yeah, listen to the audio book on Audible. Um, it's it's a it's a really really good book. But um, I, I do have to uh, say, you know, words uh, of caution that there's a lot of a lot of words in there that you sh you shouldn't be listening to um, around kids or kids shouldn't be hearing. But um, but that was a really solid book as well. Um, as far as a quote, um, you know, one of my favorite quotes is. Um, Man, I, I'm, I can't believe I just lost it right now. Um, if if you um, if you think um, how was it? It's it's by uh, Henry Ford. Wh whether you think you can or you you can or you know, whether you think you can or you can't, you're, you're right. right. Yes. So that was one of the biggest uh, um, eye-opening quotes for me. You know, no matter how your mindset is, if if you tell yourself that you cannot, then then you won't. And, and if you change your mindset, just say that I will, then, then you will. Um, and so that's, that's really, really big. And, and you know, as Yoshi um, and, and Sanjay were, were both talking about uh, today about mindset, um, having that, it's, it's so, so very, very important that you have that at the very top of your mind and, 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 and have nothing but positive things around you. So um, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Yeah. Great. Sanjay? Um, I think my aha moment, um, you know, for me, I'm, uh, I have to feel it from within. Um, however books I read or however things I see and everything, it, it's just that feel or, or moment. Uh, for me, very early on, I was probably in my um, late teens. Um, Nike's um, quote and ad um, was very catchy. Like always, Nike, it has its sign and they just, just do it. So I just basically put that on my bike. You know, in India, it's like big, you have a bike in college and all that. So I put that thing on my bike. And since then I became the just do it guy uh, in college. You know, that's how they used to call me. And then I kind of imbibed into it and uh, I just keep done it. You know, it just came uh, open and just go do it. So that was my aha moment looking back, back frankly, I didn't even think about it until you asked the question right now. Um, and if, if I take myself out, I just go in, I go into a new line of business. Right now we are uh, evaluating investing into an insurance business. Uh, we are trying to evaluate into various other things uh, just to diversify. Um, so, you know, these are some moments just click in. So I think that's my aha moment that that's made awesome. me a key shift from my very early on. That's awesome. Just do it. I love it. Yeah. Yoshi. Yeah. So I already talked, I already talked about it, but, uh, I have two big uh, life changing events was from, came from Japan, right? I left country and came to the United States. You know, this was my, just following my passion. I just wanted to go, you know, I was just, I wanted to go. I want to learn, I want to learn English. I want to learn business, I want to meet different people. And I didn't have enough preparations back then. So I just made a move and make massive action, come to the United States by myself. Um, so, massive action will change your life right um, and uh, with the preparation it's going to be a lot more smoother transact transaction you know I didn't have a preparation so you know I had, to, I had a big wall learning English and stuff like that uh, same same here same same thing from California to Texas I really want to get into the real estate investments and that was my passion I just went I want I want, I want to do it so uh, back then, I prepared a little bit more than before because I learned lesson from Japan to California. So that was a lot more easier transaction. I already knew the real estate investment, you know, philosophy, uh, just the principle, stuff like that. And I, I was actually practicing a little bit in a small scale. 
uh, and I, I have a better vision what, what I wanted to do <clears throat> in Texas and, and the, the, the made a change, right? But when, when, when I made a change you know, from, from Japan to California or California, Texas, I didn't have any doubt, you know, I didn't have any doubt. I, I, I just want to go and, and, and that was my passion and that, I, I didn't even think about not doing it, you know, just made a passive action. Um, so, you know, when, 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 it, when times come and when you, when, when, when times come, you'll know, you know, just for me, at least for me, I, I'll, I'll know. When times come, I don't know. I have no doubt. I just make a move and uh, things gonna go, or things gonna be okay figure it out i'm gonna make it happen you know awesome so, massive mass action massive action awesome awesome yeah um i think i heard that a lot from tony robbins he always says take massive action right yeah. and i think that that really resonates with me as well and another thing that um you know to share with all, all of you guys just do it massive action it all comes down to the same thing right another thing which has helped me is taking complete responsibility for whatever happens to me. For me, that was like, oh my God, yeah, wait, wait a minute. You know, when I first heard that, because normally we blame somebody else for this and that and everything that goes wrong is someone else's problem. And this whole mindset about taking 100% responsibility for your experience in life really allows you to take that driver's seat to whatever negative happens. You're like, okay, it's fine. You know, I, I take action. I, I am responsible for this. So I love it. I love it. Um, so I know we are kind of at nine. It's an hour and a half. And that's what I had scheduled because this stuff never happens in an hour. So any parting words of advice, and we'll take some questions from the audience if you guys want to paste it in the chat box or the Q&A box, but any words of advice to anybody who's looking to create passive income and to transition and to, you know, do something different? Any lots of words of advice? I would say start today. Um, that, that's the, the key word. Start today, no matter what position that you're in, no matter if, if you're ready to, to leave your, your W-2 tomorrow or if, if you're not in a W-2, um, you're ready to start a business tomorrow, um, do something today, right? Don't wait till tomorrow. Do something tonight. Um, and, you know, maybe put a little, little roadmap together, right? Yoshi and, and Sanjay, we're both talking about vision boards. Um, put something together. Start to put that together. Um, because a year from now, you're going to wish you have, ta you have taken action today, right? So every single little thing that you can do today to, to get you prepared for tomorrow is, is, is golden. So I would say don't waste time because time is going to pass by anyway. Um, and so you're going to be much, much happier if, if you have started. So uh, that, that's the biggest thing. And, and as, I, as I mentioned, um, you know, they're, they're going to fail. That's, there's no question. I embrace it. Um, learn from it, uh, tweak it, uh, make it better. Um, be around people that, that are, that are successful, be around players, um, that are not afraid to, to get out there, uh, because you, you start to become like them, you know? So they always say that to be around the, the five people, the, the five people that you spend the most time with is, is who you are. So it's, look at, look at your, your group of people that you're with, look at the people that you're spending the most time with, you know, just seriously look at that tonight or look at tomorrow night. Um, and then, and if, if they're not, if they're not passionate about what they're doing, then maybe start looking for other five people, right? So those little things will take you a long way. And those are some of the things that I did that I didn't talk about earlier in the story. Um, I just started to, to separate myself from, from that W2, physically from, from the people and it, it'll take you a whole different way in, in a new direction and, and that's much brighter. So start today, that's what I would say. That's great advice. I love it. Uh, Sanjay? Yeah, my uh, one key takeaway I would say would be, you know, three things. Um, never give up. Um, never, ever give up. And the third being never, ever, ever, ever give up. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Yoshi. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I agree with both of uh both of them, that one and, and, and Sanjay. Um, so never give up, of course, you know, you'll get there. Uh, if, if you stop, you get zero. If you don't stop, you get there, right? Very simple. And uh, addition to that, you know, find a mentor. So you get there quicker, because you, you can learn a lot before you start, you know, preparation, right? So you can grab the opportunity earlier than later. Uh, so having a mentor and uh, having the right path, that's very important too. You have a vision, you have a goal, but you're going to these directions, 
you know, you're going going wrong way. You're never gonna get to the goal. You're never gonna get to the vision. So, right path. Make sure you're on the right path. Right. Having a mentor, never give up. You'll get there. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited too, because I am. Uh, so start today. Surround yourself with people that you want to be more like, right? The minute you surround yourself, it changes you. If you hang around with mostly with people who are like you, and I, I always tell that to my daughter too, you know, if you're going to hang around with people who are not as good as you, you're going to just feel great about yourself, <laughs> but you don't grow. You don't grow, right? You grow when you surround yourself with people who are doing the things you want to do because now it inspires you to take action. Uh, never, ever, ever give up because failures happen and you have to keep moving past them. I love it. Find a mentor. Find someone who's already made the mistake so you don't have to make the mistakes again, right? I love it. I love it. Have a vision. Have a goal. Know what you're working towards because then you don't want to be walking backwards, right? So I love it, guys. I mean, I'm so inspired. I'm so excited to have you guys here. And I hope all of the audiences as well. Uh, this was amazing. All of your stories, all of the things you've achieved and how you keep yourself motivated, what your struggles were, all of it is inspiring me to take action because I know that I can be better than every day is an incremental day. And I know I can be better today than yesterday. And I'm competing with nobody but myself. And I think that's something we all need to remember. Um, so there were a lot of books that Juan um, wrote down there. Is there any questions you guys have for our audience? Let's see here. The Q&A box is really silent today. So let's see. I think uh, you guys have been answering questions as we go along. So if there are no questions, we're going to wrap up. I know it's past nine. So thank you everyone for being here. And again, thank you to our panelists for sharing their amazing stories and for just being honest and you know straightforward about struggles they're going through because there are struggles. So we are not saying that you know once you achieve financial freedom, it's a rosy day ahead. It's not. It's a different kind of day, and you have to figure out what you want to do with your life. So we will definitely have a recording. Thank you, everyone, again. Uh, thank you to the panelists. Thank you to our audience for hanging in late. I know it's late. It's 9 o'clock in the night in Central Time. So I appreciate you taking time away from your families as always. I'm excited. I won't have any webinars for October because we're doing this big event in November. So I hope you can attend it and we will add a lot of content to that as well. So I'm excited to have you guys on board. I will be sharing the details shortly and thank you everyone and have a wonderful night. Good night. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Kavita. Thanks, thank everybody. you so much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you.